Hey everyone, today we have four projects for the AZ305 certification. Before we dive in, I just want to give you a little bit of advice. The 305 is all about testing your cloud architect skill set. And the reason that the cloud architect role is not entry level friendly is because in order to really develop that skill set, you have to have implemented other types of projects or work on other projects at different capacities, cloud admin, cloud developer, DevOps engineer, these types of things. Because the cloud architect is someone who can sit down, diagram a solution and recommend to you which solution you should use based on whatever it is that your budget constraints are, compliance considerations, security considerations, all these types of things. As an example, there are 10 container services available. There might be more now in Azure. Can you sit down and tell me which one I should use and give me the pros and cons of each. That is something a cloud architect should be able to know how to go and find out. And a lot of that is based on their own experience. That's why, you know, it's harder to land those roles as an entry level person, as a beginner. And obviously as someone who's a beginner, you probably don't have that experience. So the best the second thing to do is do something like the 104, the 204 build projects there. And as you're going to see, as we walk through the projects in today's video, a lot of the stuff is based on skills from those other things. So if you got hands on in those other certifications, this time it's all about just, okay, how do I know why the solution I selected this specific uh, service? Why did, why did I recommend this? How can I design this, right? There's going to be a lot of uh, overlap here, but it's just slightly different kind of take. Instead of you going and building, it, the skill set is more so around you understanding why you selected a certain one, but also understanding all the other available options that exist there. Okay. With all that being said, hi, I'm GPS. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Comment with the next certification. In the last video, the 305 was the most popular comment. So that is why I am doing this one today. I do cloud things. I'm Microsoft here on YouTube and welcome to a new video. Okay. So we are in, uh, github.com forward slash made by GPS forward slash projects in the AZ305 section. The link will be in the description while you're at it, hit a like and subscribe. All right. So the, the 305 certification, it's all about validating your expertise in designing and implementing solutions on Azure. And you're going to be focusing on identity, governance, data storage, business continuity, and infrastructure. And here, the important part, the important part I want you to understand here is this part right here, designing and implementing and especially designing. Implementing is actually something that you do in like the 204. That's why I mentioned this is a great cert to, to do before this one or the 104. You do a lot of implementing in those and here, there's a big focus on this one. So keep all of that in mind. Okay. So first project I'm calling it Governify, 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 <laughs> the ultimate identity governance in monitoring solution. And this is focused on the design identity governance and monitoring solution. Actually, what I'm going to do is open up this, uh, the study guide for the certification here. So we can just focus on the four areas that we have here, uh, design identity, governance and monitoring solutions, 25 to 30% design data storage solutions, 20 to 25% design business continuity solutions, 15 to 20% and design infrastructure solutions, 30, 35. This one is massive, right? Uh, but you, you know how this breaks down now. Okay. So back to the readme here and yeah, first skill measured. Uh, so this is all about uh, testing your ability to design and recommend solutions. This is a word that comes up a lot in this certification recommend. Like I mentioned, as an example, Azure has 10 container services. There might be more now. You need to be able to know which one to use when and why out of the 10. And you apply that to all different types of services, right? Okay. Uh, so yeah, uh, it has, measures your ability to design and recommend solutions for logging, monitoring, authentication, and authorization in Azure. It also says is your understanding of governance, structure, well, all this stuff's in the study guide, or you can just read through this, right? So in this project, 
Create a multi-tier web application. If you've done the 104, the 204 projects, you already have this. Um, so maybe you'll save yourself some time there too. And you will set up Azure AD for authentication, use Azure policy and blueprints. Blueprints is something that we've haven't touched in the other projects. So, so it's something new here for governance and configure Azure monitor and login analytics for logging and monitoring. So let's touch on this too, because this is why I love when people are a little bit more strategic with their certifications, because for example, if we look here, this is something that we've already done. Uh, these are new. This is something that we've already done in past projects. This is something we've already done in past projects. So you can just, you know how I mentioned with um, get one certification, build a project, get a complementary certification, and then build another project. Like if your first project was something that you're already deploying a multi-tier application, then in here it's all about just, okay, how do you edit it? So you're getting a 305 skill set with that, right? So this is why I love that type of that framework that I mentioned. Okay. So anyway, you're going to be needing some programming unless you already have the application deployed, you have some other application that you can use, but you're getting hands-on with a bunch, uh, app service. We got hands-on with it on the 204 SQLs database, 204, maybe on the 104 as well. AD 104 policy. I don't think we have blueprint. We have it monitor. We have on the 204 log analytics on the 204 as well. So there's only a few things that are new here, but that's great because then you just use, you know, um, there, I also have the video, how I learned cloud things be, uh, quicker is I'm never learning anything from scratch. I'm learning it in association with other things that I know of, and it just saves you time and you learn more cause you're, you're sort of stacking your skills. And I think it's awesome. All right. So step one, uh, set up a multi-tier web application, implement step two, implement Azure AD authentication. Uh, step three, set up app governance and Azure policy and blueprints. It's a couple of other steps there too. Four, configure monitor, pretty standard. Five, implement logging. Six, set up alerts and monitoring and test the complete setup. So your goal really is to utilize policy blueprints and Azure AD to just allow the proper security procedures for someone to log into an application. The application can be anything as long as it's multi-tier and just make sure that the right people can log in and not in as long as they have the right things associated with them in Azure AD, right? That's kind of, it's pretty simple. Uh, but again, you need to put a focus on these three things here too. All right, cool. Project tool we're calling data Four, a comprehensive data storage and integration solution. And this is testing the design data storage solutions skill that is measured. And it's all about your ability to design data storage solutions for both relational and non-relational data, data types. Uh, you'll need to know how to recommend. Again, remember I mentioned this word here, it comes up so much. Recommend the appropriate Azure data services, storage tiers, and data protection strategies. Additionally, you'll be evaluated on your ability to design data integration and analysis solutions. Pretty involved here. Not gonna lie, it was kind of difficult to find a solution that would be one cost of cost uh, aware, I guess, because I know that's a lot of y'all working within a budget and also incorporated all these things, right? But in this project, you'll create a comprehensive data storage and integration solution using Azure services. You'll set up an Azure SQL database. Surprisingly, I recently learned that Azure SQL databases are actually popular in the startup world, which is great to know. And it's, hey, another thing for you to get hands on with. And then later on, if you want to go for a startup role, it may come in handy, right? But anyway, you'll set up Azure SQL database for relational data and Azure blob storage for semi-structured and unstructured data. You'll also implement data integration using Azure Data Factory and data analysis user Azure Synapses Analytics. This last one might get a little expensive, expensive if you actually kept it running. So once you build it, you know, uh, put it into like an ARM template, bicep template, and then you can, which is something that you should have practiced in the 204. And then just, you know, erase all your resources and things like that. Uh, if you kept it running, even though you wouldn't have that many, no, that much traffic, but you just be aware of it. Make sure you implement your, your budget and stuff like that too. Right? Ah, one thing I forgot to mention here in the projects that I did different than the other ones is I'm putting an emphasis on describing the diagram that you should be building out. Yeah. So there's one for each project that I am recommending here and you're, you should, as an architect, Listen to me as an architect, you need to be able to build a diagram. You need to be able to explain your solutions through diagrams. So that's why in this, this, this specific certification projects, 
I've provided you the description of the diagram. You need to go and build it and have it as part of your documentation. Okay. Programming is required here as well. Obviously you're creating stuff like, um, uh, potentially working well, SQL tech, I guess SQL technically is database. I mean, programming kind of, yeah. Uh, but anyway, here's the steps too. Uh, you're going to have to set up an Azure SQL database, make sure you create the right, use the lowest tiers possible. Okay. Keep that in mind too. You're going to populate the data with some sample relational data. You potentially could use some programming there as well. Blob storage, everything here you can do with the CLI, you can do with SDKs, however you want to do it. I would recommend at this point, if you're going for something like 305 to use a CLI instead of, um, relying on just clicking around the portal. If you are clicking around in the portal, you are not ready to be a cloud architect. If you are clicking around in the portal, you are not ready to be a cloud architect. You need to be able to interact with whatever cloud platform you're using with a CLI or an SDK or some other way. You cannot be wasting your time clicking around. All right, cool. Anyway, more steps here on what you're actually uh, need to implement high level enough for you to sh you know struggle and really feel like you want to quit and then get momentum and be like, yeah, I know everything, right? That's kind of the goal with these guys. Anyway, next up, we have continuity craft, mastering business continuity in Azure, design business continuity solutions is a skill measured here. So it's all about being able to design. Again, this word here, we see recommend, we see design a lot. Backup and disaster recovery solutions for Azure and hybrid workloads. I have mentioned before that I think hybrid is going to become very, very popular and longevity, I could be wrong though, longevity when it comes to cloud computing, you're going to see a significant amount more used in hybrid than like cloud native or any kind of other or multi-cloud. That's just kind of a thought that I have. Um, but anyway, uh, include, including compute resources, database and unstructured data, it's, you know, business continuity for different types of cloud services or, or cloud categories. Yeah. Cloud technology categories, maybe. It also values your expertise in recommending high availability solutions for various types of data and compute resources, right? I have some uh, videos diagramming out things like uh, fault tolerance, high availability, and a couple of other concepts. You can go check those out. Uh, but yeah, this is all about, hey, if my, pro if my product fails, if my solution is failing, how quick can I get it back to, to in a running state, in a healthy state, and how much money am I losing? How much money can we avoid losing if we implement these types of uh, business continuity solutions, right? So in this project, you're going to set up a multi-tier application with a relational database and blob storage. You could potentially build this in this first one and then just reuse it for the first and the second one or build the first one and then implement the third one, like the features of the third one, however you want to do it, right? And you'll implement backup and disaster recovery for each component and ensure high availability for the entire system, right? So whatever you build here, you're not really focused on building like backups. Uh, maybe you have like images that are, are running, snapshots that are running. Uh, maybe you have like stuff deployed in two regions, whatever it is, right? Uh, here you're just building right that, that multi-tier application. But in the third one, take it a next step and just make sure everything's backed up. Um, make sure you have a, uh, what else do we need here? Wait, what was it? Uh, okay, and highly available. Highly available is cheaper than fault tolerant, I believe. So you could potentially, I mean, you could potentially implement for both, but just, you know, keep in mind your budget. Okay. Uh, program required. Yes. Cause multi-tier application, but you could already have it as well. And there is a diagram here. Uh, so be sure to build that out as well. Okay. Awesome. All right. Finally, the last project that I have for you all is called InfraGenius. These names are very corny, but I am a very corny person. So. It's appropriate. Design infrastructure solutions. And this is all about your ability to design various types of compute solutions, application architectures, and migration strategies. Big. Migration is a very, where did it go? Hold on. What happened? It is a very uh, lucrative skill set if you can migrate stuff. <laughs> uh, it also assesses your expertise in designing networking solutions. This is the biggest part. So this is why this project is a little bit more involved. But this is, I think, 30 to 35% of the exam. So in this project, you'll design and implement a comprehensive Azure infrastructure solution that includes a virtual machine based application, containerized microservices, serverless functions, and batch processing tasks. You'll also integrate these components using a messaging architecture and migrate an on-premise database to Azure. Finally, you'll optimize network performance and security. Then you have the description here. 
you're going to be using a lot. So this is, this, this is the closest to potentially something like a production, like think of like an amazon.com or I don't know, like Barnes and Noble's website, because you can have like uh, some kind of front end deployed on a virtual machine. And then your back end could be uh, a bunch of functions, a bunch of uh, bash, um, batch code uh, or batch processes or code that's meant to be executed in batch processes. Uh, you could actually also have some stuff that's containerized deployed on AKS. You could also potentially use container apps here instead of AKS. You'll probably need, well, no, you'll definitely need to have service bus or some sort of messaging technology that will communicate with your microservices and your individual components because they can't talk to each other because they're not on the same infrastructure, right? Like your, your, your functions, your containers are not on your VM. So how are they going to talk to each other? Well, you use a service in the middle of that. I also have a messaging, how, how components com communicate in the cloud. I think that's what that video is called. SQL database, VPN gateway, network security groups, load balancer. That's all for the traffic uh, to your other components as well, right? And then you have your high level uh, steps here. Don't forget to build that diagram as well. This one is fun. I think I actually might build this and like build a course around this one because it has a lot of fun things like figuring out messaging services. In my opinion, I don't know why I really like it, but I do. And that is it for this video. Drop a comment. Let me know which one I should cover next. And yeah, go build, go build. There are four months left in this year. If you're watching this in the day it came out, right? You don't need another course. You don't need another tutorial. You got everything you need to go and get hands on. If my videos are wasting your time, stop watching them. Unsubscribe. I I care about your skill set and you learning. I don't necessarily care if you subscribe to my channel. Um, but yeah, a lot can change. Your skills can, can can drastically improve in four months. So it's time to go and build. All right. See you in the next video.